I think one of the clearest examples that we can give is around sports data. You know, mm-hmm. some of the more traditional APIs, right? That like give um, like results on you know different leagues and different games, and how that can be used then for like market creation. Like, just look at what happened with Orgo, for example, on Polygon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, clear example. So, I think you know, outside of DeFi and just what we're seeing at the minute, just non-traditional sort of price feeds and um, the applications that can be done with some of these data points is um, yeah, it's pretty exciting and. These data providers are just really keen on on thinking of how their data can be used and actually changing the way that their APIs work for on chain usage as well, which is you know always cool. I think an, another <laughs> this one's always funny as well. Like another use case is um, like price feeds for valuable and like rare cars. So if mm-hmm. you think of you know there was one that we was looking at on Corvin for the like Ferrari F12 like TDF. Yeah, having a price feed for that, so it's yeah, it's really cool. Just thinking of like different use cases, so even where just um, like price feeds can be um, yeah applied to more sort of like traditional or just weird and wonderful different items. Welcome to Chainlink Live. My name is Andy Boyan from Chainlink Labs. I'm lucky to be talking to Johnny Huxtable today from. Link pool. How you doing, man? No, I'm good. Thank you for having me. So it's I, fun to reach out and, and do live things and a bit more press and stuff. So yeah, yeah. Thank you. It is my absolute pleasure. We've got a great group of people here. I want to say to the audience, we can see your comments. Uh, I got Mark in the chat hanging out, adding information. Hey, Mark, how you doing? And then also, uh, if you have your questions, feel free to drop them in here. Ask them. I've got some questions and I'm going to geek out about link pool stuff with Johnny. But then if you have questions as well, we'll pull them up and we'll address them as we can. Um, first, let's give people kind of a sense. What is link pool? What makes you special as a, a core contributor of the Chainlink ecosystem? Sure. Um, you know, we are one of the largest ecosystem developers on the Chainlink network. I suppose we're special in the sense that we're old timers these days. You know, we've been going since like late 2017 um, and we've been building ever since on top of Chainlink Reeler. You know, we offer sort of, you know, hence the name Link Pool. Like our first product was like the staking pools that we're still working on, but then obviously the, the marketplace as well, which serves as a, um, a core like entry point to the Chainlink network. Um, and also, you know, the infrastructure products and what we do in terms of like the managed nodes, the data providers, a lot of what we've done on the uh, re- recent market update. So, yeah, it's, a, you know, it's a, we're in a unique position. And for us, it's it's wild to have gone through this journey of, you know, like a bedroom project in 2017 to scaling and having a, a full-fledged um, team these days who are working on exciting and cool products. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I I think people kind of get lost in the, you know, Chainlink, it's the protocol is this behemoth, but there are multiple different organizations that build Chainlink and Linkpool is is one of those one of the biggest ones. Um, uh, So so that that clarification is really helpful for people. Um, All right, we got some good questions coming in as well. I'm excited to see see stuff like that. But let's first because I want to talk about this. Let's first look at market.link. This is a newly uh, upgraded website. This is the site's been around for a while, um, but just last week, kind of the rollout of a new UI, new experiences, and things like that. And if you have it up, you can, can share. We can you can click around while you talk about what it is. That might be cool for people to see. Yeah. So for us, this um, just like I was saying before, this update signals a big, I suppose not direction change, but a, an entirely new area of sort of features and um, ideas for the marketplace, especially a lot more developer focused. Now you can see the the big banner at the top regarding data providers, which is an exciting sort of development on the Chainlink network that you've got more first party nodes who are, you know, API mm-hmm. providers offering their data directly on the network, which is you know different to what we do on the price feeds in some respect. Um, you can go down, you can view you know, the nodes, the feeds, the data providers and adapters, you know, all, all of this is community driven as well. So anyone who builds anything for the Chainlink network, runs a node, can go in, list what they build, what they offer to the network. And one of the larger features that we did last year was the metrics. So the bit that you're just scrolling down to at the minute, which gives people, um, <laughs> loading animation there, just gives people a, a view into the Chainlink network as well. So, you know, when, 
If you're not familiar with what we do or what the Chainlink Network is about, it just helps you understand this. And you know, you've got your single pane of glass really into the Chainlink Network, which is what this is seeking to achieve. So, um, yeah, it's been you know really good to watch this and grow this product. <laughs> <laughs> well, do, in the mornings here this is like peak uh gas use time <laughs> is is right <laughs> at, at my time eastern people wake up and go and, and adjust their uh lps so yeah uh, live demos we, never work it's always something problematic on them yeah there you go here um, so yeah this is the networks metrics page i was talking about earlier i think there's some really interesting stuff on here um so if you can walk through some of this stuff uh that might be cool yeah yeah sure um so like, as you see at the top is average gas price, like daily updates, transactions, and active networks. So um, a lot of these charts um, like change basically based on the volatility of the network. So, you know, if you had a look at this during like the recent volatility a week or two ago, I don't know, time flies, um, then a lot of these, you would have seen like large spikes, for example. So you can mm -hmm. see daily transactions is the amount of single actual raw transactions that Chainlink nodes send on the network. And total active networks are the amount of feeds that have a um, an update in a day. So you can see either there's feeds that aren't that volatile or just like the active number, which is like the average of feeds um, at a given time in a day. Um, link rewards as well. So the amount of link that actually passes through the network um, and how that is then reimbursed to the node operators and then the top feed there. Um, typically the index uh, feeds are the ones that are most volatile because mm -hmm. and get the most transactions because they cover um, a huge part of the, the ecosystem. So um, it's important you know, for the Chainlink network to have um, like good thresholds and update rates on these feeds. So they actually um, represent a, an accurate view of each of each one of these feeds. And then underneath, like down below, there's more like a live updating table. So you can see the actual updates across every feeds, every feed in real time, and see some information about it. So like the fastest node on that feed or the transmitter, which is more um, applicable to OCR, the, the actual answer, gas costs. And it's, you know, it's really good to see like sub 20 gray gas prices. Yeah, it seems. <laughs> um, this would have so, been a scary page a few weeks ago, right? Yep. Yep. So, um, but I mean, even, you know, I tweeted about this as well. I don't tweet often, but I felt like it was worth to be um, spoken about at the time. But seeing gas prices spike to two and a half thousand gray and all of the chain link feeds still operating as normal with no blips is, you know, is a huge sort of real world uh, stress test and validation of the entire thing, especially the OCR protocol. That's not, mm -hmm. um, it's never really been through that sort of stress test in mainnet. Um, obviously, we do that behind the scenes and when it's been developed. But yeah, to, to see that for real was um, yeah, really something special. The, um, the theory, the gas usage weren't that special, but it was good to see. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, uh, I think there was a fair amount of commentary about right when the when the market kind of had a dip that all the systems, the DeFi systems, stayed in place, and especially yeah. Chainlink protocol. It it still called prices, it still aggregated prices, it still delivered prices, um, and and that this speaks exactly to that. I, yeah. I really like this. Um, you know, a, a few months ago we had the off chain aggregation announcement that that those had upgraded. And we're going to see more and more of these OCRs. Um, and we've still got flux aggregators as the backup ones. They're still updating yeah. as well. Um, oh, hey, we just had a live update. Oh, how cool. This was this is great, man. We talk a, a fair amount about um, in, in marketing at Chainlink Labs about how people can uh, uh, look for themselves. You can basically audit for yourself. How does the Chainlink network work? Where do they get where do you get prices? Where do the feeds come from? Here it is. Go. It, it's here. Uh, yeah. there, there's a couple of resources, but this is a fantastic one. Yep, no, I appreciate it. And, um, you know, it's still a lot of work going on behind the scenes to improve these and add more metrics and uh, make it a bit more open source as well and use some of the latest, greatest um, protocols that have been developed in the blockchain community to expand on this. So yeah, it's one of the coolest features that we've done. And I think as a you know, single pane of glass, it's a really nice thing. 
Um, Cause you know, people can go in and use these APIs and create their own dashboards and stuff to have a custom view of the, the Chainlink network. Um, we talked a little bit uh, before the break about the the new kinds of data feeds that are exciting and on here. Are there some that are uh, uh, kind of stick out to you? I, I know you mentioned the sports one. I don't know if any of yep. these are, are pulling data live, but um, this is this is like the next frontier, right? It's not just price feed data. Is we've got live match updates, we've got player data for the sports, we've got all this other sorts of uh, sort of interesting stuff. What are some of the other interesting ones you guys have been seeing? Um, good question. Um, yeah, I mean, just to sort of like dial it back a bit with how much Chainlink scaled over the past two years, it's one of our biggest challenges is just keeping up with all the updates that Chainlink do and the developments that they do, especially for a team like us who aren't as big, but we're, you know, looking at sort of um, just supporting and, and moving along with all the, the updates that Chainlink do. It's It's just, it's hard to keep up. So um, visualizing and being able to show sort of how these non-DeFi data providers are used is something that we're actively working on. Um, but, you know, in terms of um, like unique data sources, um, for me, one of the ones I always found um, pretty interesting was um, the the watch signals mm -hmm. um, data source. So. I always like the sort of the weird and wonderful. Um, and when we was working with them, uh, we, you know, we worked with them to sort of tweak their API to work with Chainlink and sort of consulted on that front. And they was really excited, but that sort of loops back to what we was talking about with um, like collectible cars and having, mm -hmm. you know, owning a, a token that represents like part sort of um, ownership or backed um, by, by the car itself, like watch signals would be able to provide the same, but with luxury goods like watches mm -hmm. and like classic Rolexes and stuff. So that's always a um, an interesting one. Even yeah. with, oh, sorry. Uh, so you said something really interesting about some of these non-traditional uh, sources is, is you've got a pretty good way to represent price data, but like how do you represent sports data on this website in, in the same way. If sports monks here is going to deliver data for a ton of matches, I think, you know, let's say they do cricket. Are you going to have to cover every cricket match? Are you going to have to find a, like, are you a, a, now a, a sports website as well that, that covers scores? <laughs> That's a really interesting problem that I yeah. have not, did not foresee that Linkpool is probably dealing with like, okay, we're going to be a weather, real estate, sports, and market data representation hub. That, that's a hard design task. Yeah, I mean, it's a big technical challenge as well, because one of the things that we want to do to help developers is so, yeah, if you click in integrate on there, it gives um, like a readme and some documentation on how mm -hmm. to sort of, you know, if you was a developer writing a smart contract, how you would actually use this data. Um, we want to expand on this in the future and give like live um, visualizations on what the data actually is. So we've got to think of um, a technical way and sort of design how we do this across all the different types of data so sports data um like real estate typical more traditional um like options analytics for example or price data um it and yeah it's one of the things that we're currently working on the the way we um, display data providers and sort of have that integration at the minute is you know our mvp and is definitely going to be a, a lot more in the in the ways of that in the future. So um, looking forward to it. And you know the engineering team that we've got, um, you know, it's obviously not as big as Chainlink, but you know we're a small but highly skilled bunch, and you know just proud to be part of it. Really. Yeah. No, that's a really interesting design challenge, um, and, and I can't help but wonder about hackathons and potential for community involvement and some stuff like mm -hmm. this. We might have some sports design fanatics who want to come in, or weather design fanatics. So um, uh, yeah. this is is cool stuff, and it's you know a, as Chainlink scales with the types of projects, it's going to need more support, right? That's just yep, kind of how yep. it goes. But um, hackathons has been one of um, the most exciting areas of this. So we've. You know, we provide support and sort of um, help people in hackathons who use this data. And during, um, yeah, during those events, it's been one of the main um, sort of times people actually get stuck in and use it and think about ways on how they can apply that to smart contracts, which is just, yeah, really neat. Now, I see it says Ethereum mainnet up here. Are you guys going to 
is Polygon coming? Is BSC coming as well? Or is that an option? Yeah, yeah. So if um, we're actually, again, we're actually doing some big work on this at the minute. So if you click the, the cog at the top right, um, there's a network selector. So you can oh, see cool. <laughs> if you if you click Matic, for example, and go to Matic mainnet, um, you'll see on there the same functionality across all the different networks. So the data providers. Oh, so now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the data providers, the same sort of metrics. Um, yeah, the nodes which are supported on these networks. So. Oh, so these are the Matic net. Oh, cool. So you guys have all yep. this stuff up here. Fantastic. Yep. That's like a whole nother level, man. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's been cool to develop this and to sort of a lot of the things we've been doing behind the scenes to expand on it and support different networks. Um, I suppose one of the, the areas just based on like supporting different networks, one of the things that is, um, I suppose it's, it's fair to say it took us a little bit by surprise is how many networks have been coming in thick and fast for us to support, especially even as at the basic level as being a node operator because we have to you know spin up all the infrastructure mm -hmm. to be able to deal with this. Um, it's, it's really cool to sort of be at the forefront of seeing this growth and supporting all these different chains, especially like... Um, well, Polygon and how much like DeFi has been adopted on there, especially like the TVL in different protocols. Like, look mm -hmm. how much like Aave has got locked up on there. Um, and we're definitely sort of working on improvements at the minute to make the the view between networks a lot more seamless, rather than having selectors for different networks actually grouping it all in one and giving people the visibility to actually see what networks, node operators, and feeds are on without actually individually switching between networks. So really sort of um, like unifying the, the whole experience um, and making a lot of design tweaks as well, which, um, yeah, is like a, a lot of other things really under active development. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's cool to work on it. I mean, one the greatest part about working for Chainlink Labs is learning about every project that comes through the space that yeah. integrates Chainlink. It's and, and that's from a marketing perspective, writing about it and talking about them. And you guys are building on them. You guys are developing on all of these ecosystems, connecting all the dots. Uh, it, it it seems very exciting. Um, I have a couple of really good questions that I'm going to go through, guys. I'm not sure. going to answer all of your questions, but I will get to a number of them. Brian's got a great one, especially with the recent Keeper announcement. Are you guys doing anything with Keeper nodes? Yep. Um, so we will be, well, we are running a keeper node on mainnet at the minute and the um, the beta of it. Supporting keeper on the market is something that we're going to be doing as well. Um, we're just sort of thinking about the design choices and like the architecture of how we're going to do this in the marketplace and how it's going to look with everything else. Um, but yeah, definitely. Cool. I got another question uh, about the link pool token, and it also asks about chain link token. Let me let me start with this one because let's go to Smart Zip for example. Here's what the link token is for. It shows you right down here. Yep. You got to pay in link to access um, to to be to call the oracles and to to pay the data providers. That's what the functionality of the link token is for. So, do you want? To, can you talk a little bit about the link pool token and how that's different? Sure. So our token has been around for quite some time and we migrated it to ERC20 not long back, um, which ties into the new version of our staking app. And the benefits of owning the token really is, is having um, representative ownership of the rewards that we get through our nodes. Um, so if you, it's not the marketplace, but app.link.pool, um, there's the link pool owners pool. And if you stake in there, you get a, um, a representative share of all the link rewards that get through um, our node. So, you know, we've got a lot of things planned on that side of um, the ecosystem as well and what we're going to be doing with the, the new version of the staking app, um, which, you know, we'll be sharing in due course. But, yeah, same thing again, a lot of exciting developments. And I think the community at large will be um, very intrigued and exciting, um, excited on, you know, what we're planning on that regard. 
So excellent. I'm not going to say anything yet, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I see the community is always asking about chain link staking as well. And I'm not going to address those questions directly because the engineering team is, I'm not going to speak for Ari Jules, right? Like you don't want to hear from me. Let, I want to wait until the engineering team has the clear uh, uh, um, direction on what staking will look like before we talk about uh, staking and ex those exact structures and metrics. But Will, I do see your questions. We do see those staking questions. Um, we're all interested in it too. So we're uh, uh, excited and waiting as well. Um, but I'm not. Uh, we're not ready to address those quite yet. Uh, yeah, let's just, see. I've just seen, check, just clicked the check. comments, haven't seen uh, when, when link staking like 10 times. So yeah, you I'm know, not surprised. Uh, oh, here's, here's the one that just came in. Uh, what do you think about roll-ups and feeds frequency updates or any layer two? Like, how does that affect uh, feed frequency updates? Um, good, good question. Yeah, this is a, an interesting one. And, you know, we was thinking about this in regards to like OCR and how roll-ups will work, especially with like on-chain config of those feeds. But um, I, I don't see it affecting them too much. I think the feeds will run as independent feeds on each equivalent network, and the feeds will run um, independently and concurrently um, on both chains. Um, it's a good question in regards to rollups and and them writing that back to like the layer one, but mm -hmm. um, I think it'll the feeds will just um, act independently and in parallel. To be honest, so I don't think there'll be that much change in that regard. So if there is um, a feed on Loopring, for example, it doesn't make sense to like have that feed tie back to Ethereum. You would just do the feed independently yeah. because because they're yeah. basically two separate networks when it comes to getting Oracle data in. Is that, is yeah. that right? Yeah, because if you were doing this on Loopring, for example, or um, anywhere else on because of the um like gas price and how much cheaper it is to run on on layer two chains you'd probably want to have a really high um sort of update frequency on those feeds because it's just simply a lot cheaper to do it and have a really low threshold so um you get more resolution in the data that you provide on chain and that allows developers to build more precise applications. You can do, you know, really precise metrics for futures, or you can do, you know, build basically what looks like a traditional order book instead of a DEX, or or, or do more things. Uh, you can create futures and, and shorts with smaller metrics and things like that if you have more frequent updates. If it's every half a second, right? You get crazy real time data. That's just a very different. Um, it's yeah, like uh, Polygon is a clear example of this. Even though it's you know it doesn't it's it's more a a, a side chain than, um, and it doesn't use rollups. But if you mm -hmm. have a look at the frequency of requests and the gas costs versus rewards, it just makes it um, a lot more uh, viable to have a really high rate of um, updates on feeds. Same with. Um, bsc as well just there's some you know each chain have has different characteristics and you know chain link as a as a protocol is really flexible in what it can um you know customize and what parameters it works to on different chains which is you know the great thing um about it but yeah i, I just see it as running independently and probably similar to what you'd see on on polygon for example so let's say I'm, uh, we're, we're getting a little bit near the end. So if you guys have more questions, go ahead and drop them in. Um, let's say I'm a hacker. I'm, I'm a, going to a hackathon and I want to make something weird and cool and new. What's the process? I want to go find a cool data feed. What do I, what do, I do? How do I use market.link? Sure. Um, I think for hackathons, at least, like your first um, point of call should be the data providers and what we're doing there. Um, you know, you can go to each of the data providers, have a look if the data listed on there uh, matches the use case that you're thinking of, look at the integrations tab, and then start writing into that. Um, just, yeah, starting writing in um, your contracts with that data. Um, so that could be price data, sports data, um, real estate data, um, and sort of really um, try and think of weird and wonderful ways on how to use it and we're all always adding new data providers on here um so i've had a bit of a lull at the minute while we've been um busy but you know we're getting them getting them through thick and fast so 
you know, over the weeks, you're going to keep on seeing more and more data providers come on there. So I awesome. think the most recent example is, um, yeah, the real estate now data. Um, and yeah, we're currently behind the scenes. We're currently working on a um, new sports data provider as well. So uh, that's awesome. I I'm really excited to see the fantasy sports apps come out that update player stats on chain. I think that is uh, going to be a really exciting um, element. Yep. Um, I think one, one of the good things we've, um, we've just onboarding a lot more of these data providers as well is, is how, um, how much more it helps you to decentralize any um, just application that you're building. So, you know, when we, enroll the latest sports data provider on there. We'll have three different unique ones that all provide similar data. So, you know, you can form some um, aggregation and consensus on what the right answer is rather than relying just on a single point of, of truth, which may um, um, cause issues down the line. So yeah. now you guys also work directly with these data providers. So, to, so they run their own node. It, is that uh, a model that we're going to see a lot of going forward is that how you're going to talk to enterprises and these companies is to let them get involved in crypto like is, is that one of the major value propositions here exactly um you know the difference to all of these data providers rather than just um supporting these on the link pool node is all of these guys are running on their own nodes it's you know it's it's their node and they're pro providing the data as a first partner it's a trend that we're going to see a lot more of, and it's probably going to keep on ramping up. And I think one of the um, exciting things about this is it, a lot of the time it's not us reaching out to different data providers. It's data providers who are interested in this space and have seen what Chainlink is doing, reaching out to us. Um, so if anything, we've got a, you know, a large backlog of people to work through and integrations to build to uh, support all of this. So, now, we've been scaling our team just for um, this very thing. And, you know, you're going to keep on seeing this ramp up in the future, which is going to be exciting. So at the minute on there, you see 13, but that number is going to grow um, significantly in the future. This is one of the ways I think, you know, a company, a traditional company doesn't always see the application of crypto. They're not going to do a token offering. They're not going to necessarily write a DAP with a smart contract, but maybe they have data. And it's like, okay, we'll sell your data to smart contract developers. Yeah. Um, that it, it's a relatively low uh, hanging fruit. If we can just go through link pool, help run my own node, and suddenly you're selling data to smart contract developers. Yeah. It's an incredible value add, especially as smart contract economy grows and DeFi grows and all these weird applications yeah. that uh, hackers are making grow. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Just even like the whole business model, if you think of how the price feeds are structured at the minute, you know, there's, there could be 31 nodes on a price feed and all of those are subscribed to some of the best data providers that provide this data. So, you know, if you're uh, a, an API provider and you're providing some form of data, if this gets adopted um, on the blockchain and some cool use cases pop up around it, then, you know, you're going to get a lot of different node operators and people operate chain um, oracles basically just subscribing to your data source and you know from a business model, model point of view it, it, it makes sense and it, again it's one of the things that people are excited about when we speak to them in regards to offering their data i'm excited um what's on the roadmap what's kind of the short term but uh, steps it sounds like you've got a couple more integrations in mind and uh, more networks but then what are some of the longer term goals like so, so first, I, I want to hear both things. Like, what, what are the immediate next steps that we're going to see in the next couple months? But then, what is your vision for Link Pool? As it's not the Chainlink Labs, same, same thing. You guys are this distinct entity that's doing something really unique. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to discuss short term goals, at least I touched on a few. Um, so supporting the latest developments in the Chainlink network, like Keepers, VRF. Um, different networks and we're going to be making that a lot more clearer and um, we're going to be expanding on how we do metrics and just making that um, utilize a lot of the, the better protocols like the graph going forward um, longer term you know the the focus for us with the marketplace it has been for a while but I feel like the vision is a lot clearer is to make it a lot more developer focused um, Primarily, like so far, it's been mostly for people who are interested in the Chainlink network and observe what is mm -hmm. what is going on with the network, rather than being a um, 
you know, a point of, of entry for developers to actually get started and use the network. So this is um, a lot of what we're striving towards. I think um, our community and people of followers will be excited to know that one of the longer term goals and it's in its infancy now is we're actually working on node as a service within the marketplace. So people will actually be able to go in and use the market to one click deploy. Chainlink nodes have their own you know, little window and can actually go in, deploy adapters, um, you know, use different data sources and then list what they create through node as a service onto the marketplace as well, which is exciting. So, you know, that will be a big win for people just getting started, hackathons, you know, so they don't have to go through the process, even though it's simple of running a chain link node, just cutting it down so it's a one click deploy and you get in, you know, your own little pocket of infrastructure um, is really exciting. So that's is that a highly the, requested, has that been a highly requested feature? Yeah. Well, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, um, funnily enough, talked about it in 2018 like a long long time ago um and yeah it's it's got to the point in time now where it's it makes sense for us to actually spend the effort to to build it and the the ideas for how we're going to build it and what it's going to look like have become um a lot more matured over the years when we've been thinking about it so i think when we actually get it rolled out it'll be exciting for different people because we're going to be offering you know these nodes across um, all different networks. You know all the networks that we support, and it will also create a economy of of um, like third party companies who want to offer nodes as a service, like on the Chainlink network as well. So um, when we have more about that, we'll share it. But it's yeah, you know, it's a exciting sort of longer term goal, especially for the market. I'm very excited about that as well. Um, I'll have you back. We'll talk about that whenever it launches, however long it takes. <laughs> sure. I, I'm I'm a stickler for like I don't hold developers or um, founders to to hard deadlines. So you know, build it and make it secure and make it work, and then we'll talk whenever that whenever that happens. Yeah. Um, this has been really fun uh, going through market dot link the upgraded website. Um, taking a look at the resources, it's really interesting to hear your focus on a, a move from. You know, a, a this is cool. Look at what is happening on Chainlink to start using Chainlink developers. Here's the tools, and and we just saw that. Like clicking through, find a data provider. Here's the the integrations. Get started and go. So really excited to see more of that. Um, how can people get involved? We've got a bunch of fans uh, of yours and followers in the chat. Uh, what's the best way people can get involved? And I'm going to talk about two kinds of people. What's the best way developers can get involved? And what's the best way that um, non-developers, people who are enthusiasts, can get involved in your community? Sure. Um, developers themselves, you know, they can start actually spinning up Chainlink nodes, thinking of like cool use cases. Um, and, you know, they can even build APIs to return like different types of data sources and, and really get in touch and we can help sort of shape their vision and consult with them on how they can sort of um, best develop to um, to build something on the Chainlink network. For non-developers, um, I think you know, you, you, just even getting familiar with um, just running a Chainlink Oracle and some, some of the more uh, technical aspects of how you run like different blockchain networks, how uh, DeFi is put together, how bridges work and everything else is um, just a really valuable sort of nugget of knowledge to have. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I, I can't help but agree. You know, th some things that are basic to me, I've been using DeFi for a while, you know, switching a wallet, switching a wallet from Matic network to Ethereum network is basic to me now. That's, you know, we're, we're, we have layer two solutions. Yeah. But that's a if you start from the very beginning in zero knowledge, that's a pretty complicated process. Um, right. So, so for enthusiasts who are not necessarily developers or highly technical, learning how to do that and learning how to explain that to others is uh, everything, right? That that's onboarding people to the real world right. uh, of of smart contracts and blockchain and that stuff matters. Yeah, I think people, um, you know, don't realize like they they hear the word DeFi and a lot of what's going on, but don't actually sort of think about it in in real terms and how themselves can use it. You know, a lot of people might just buy some crypto, sit on it, and hold it in like Coinbase and like different exchange wallets. You know, um, it's easy to really sort of get involved and start creating your own wallets and use DeFi apps and use different networks and understand how it all fits together. And you know, it, it's just really valuable. And then you can help teach others. Really, it's a 
it's a booming scene and a, an exciting one. And then the next thing you know, you're talking to your co-founder and starting Linkpool in 2017 <laughs> and then running a uh, global network of Chainlink data providers. Um, this has been awesome, Johnny. Uh, thank you so much to the audience for coming. Um, what, where are the best places? Where, where is your community? Are you guys Discord or Telegram oriented? Um, Telegram, Telegram, right? Yeah, Telegram. And you know you can follow us on, on Twitter. Um, so yeah, main place is really, oh, we have a... Um, a talk forum as well, um, a discourse forum. So it's more like long, um, long format, like posts on there about who we are and what we do. So, yeah. I'm going to throw this comment up here. We're going to pray for Eric because <laughs> Eric's a good friend of both of ours. Uh, and we love him a lot. Um, join the link pool telegram, join the link pool community and participate if you, uh, as you can join the chain link community, join, uh, our, the discord, which is primarily for developers, but anybody can join and start learning the ropes there. And of course the official telegram, my, my, my buddy Mark is in there. Thank you so much, Johnny, for being here with me today and talking through this with me. No, thank you, Anda. It's been a pleasure. Um, and thank you to Mark for hanging out in the chat and supplying all those great resources and for the great questions in chat. Everybody, this has been Chainlink Live. My name is Andy Boyan. We do this a couple of times a week. Uh, so I want you to like and subscribe, come back and talk to founders of incredible projects, data providers, cool dApps, and amazing infrastructure developers like Linkpool. Johnny, thanks again, man. We'll see you next time. Thank you. See ya. Bye.